Well, in this video, I am going to reassemble the Sears Craftsman 6-inch lathe. In the last video, I cleaned it and I painted it, and it's all ready to put back together. And yes, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. I hope you enjoy the video. It'll be a long one, and there'll be many, many more videos on the 6-inch lathe. So, hope you enjoy it, and uh, leave me comments, and thumbs up if I deserve it. To start with, I'm going to install the rack, and remember there's a couple little dowel pins, one on each end, and those need to go into the appropriate hole here on the bed, and that's easy enough. Matter of fact, that one fell right in. I thought maybe I would have to hammer it, and then there are five little flathead screws, and I'll do that off camera. And most of you know the purpose of the rack, but the apron is not fully assembled yet, or carriage, whatever you want to call this, but this little gear cluster that gets mounted right here, and then is connected to the hand wheel, which goes on this shaft. So once this is assembled, this little pinion gear right here, it's a rack and a pinion, isn't it? That is what drives the, the carriage across the bed when you turn the hand wheel, which is uh, right here. Next, I'm going to install the headstock, but this must be absolutely clean, and I've already cleaned it four or five times, as does these mating surfaces right here. Always, you run a file across there and then wipe it and then Again, just a little bit of oil under there, like that, and then I'm ready to put this on, And but I will have to install these four slotted cap screws. I don't know why they use slotted. Well, yeah, no, they're not slotted. They're uh, Phillips. Nowadays, I think they would use socket head type screws. And I've already put two screws in there. There's number three. And number four. And these two have to be accessed through these clearance holes. And that is why you have to take the pedestals off, the feet, or whatever you might want to call them. So I will tighten all four of those very securely with Phillips. And now I'm going to put the feet on, and as I told you, these appear to be identical castings, they even have the same pattern number, but I did make two little notches right here because I just as soon reassemble exactly as I took it apart. So that'll go on there like that with three slotted uh, screws and the same thing down on the other end. And as, once I get these fastened, then I can put it back uh, right side up. And now the split nut or half nut or threading nut. And we got a lever here. There's two little pins. This is made of Zamac. And they go into these little slots here and two cap screws to hold this together. Now there's a keeper that goes underneath here and is held on with three screws and that prevents 
the carriage from lifting, but there are three shims. Your machine may have more or less than three, but that's what re is re I took out, and that's what I'm putting back. And it'll go like this with the three screws, and since that's kind of fiddly, I won't show that. And next, there's a gib that goes into here, and we got to have oil on that. And don't forget to oil this surface from time to time when you're operating the machine. And line it up with these four holes, and then there are four gib screws, and they are dog pointed, as you can see. So those will be brought up just snug and then locked with the hex nut. That too is fiddly and has to be adjusted so that it's snug but and maybe even drags just a little bit but yet we want the carriage to move freely remember there are little uh, divots little indentations in that gib similar to this so make sure that the dog point screws are truly seated and then get out your ignition wrenches that you haven't used since you tuned up your 54 chevy blue flame six and the, whole, the idea here now is hang, hang on to the nut and then just snug the screw and tighten the nut and do that to the other three. And after I do that, I want to make sure that the carriage turns freely and is not locked up. If it doesn't move smoothly and freely, back them off just a hair. These are very fine threads. Now, I have two more sets of gibs to adjust as I assemble this, and I won't show how to do that, but gibs are gibs no matter what machine they're on, and look at how nice and freely that moves, and if they're snugged up right, the entire uh, carriage here, apron, will not move this way, and the keeper on the bottom keeps it again from lifting up. So that is done and ready to go. I probably should have assembled the carriage lock before, but I think I can get it in there now. So that'll go in there and thread into there. These two little lugs here have to be facing up. Don't put it in like that. And I think that I can slide it in there. And uh, yes. And just finger tight. And of course, when you lock this with a wrench, it holds the the carriage in uh, whatever position that you have it in. I'm ready to put the lead screw in and I've cleaned that so it's good in good shape. And the half nut, I did clean that when I had it apart. I didn't show that. So that needs to be in the up position because the lead screw has to go through this and through the half nut like that. And then these two screws to hold that bearing on and then we'll put this bearing into place make sure you oil that upon assembly but there also is an oil hole here it even says oil as there is on the other end so that'll go in like and then the two screws into place okay I've tightened up these two screws these two screw holes in this bearing are slotted. So you need to take the play out of that. See how much play there is? Watch, watch this. So I'm gonna move that to the far right and then tighten these up. Why? And then the other one too, yes. Uh, because you don't want the, the whole lead screw to move back and forth when you're feeding or especially when you're threading because you would lose your place. That's important. Next, I'm going to put the cross slide on it and as always, oil. I know you're sick of hearing that and make sure some of that oil gets up into the dovetail. And you can oil this again after assembly. So looking at this now, there is the gib and make sure you get it in there correctly. See the little angles on the end? 
And I'll put the little screws in after I get it on there because we, we have to slide this on and get the threaded screw here to, to line up with the brass nut. Something like this. Matter of fact, exactly like this. And then we can engage the thread. You see, I've caught the brass nut. And I'll bring it about to the middle, and then I'm going to install and adjust these three gib screws that go right in here. And that will be done exactly like on the back side, so I don't believe I'll show that. Okay, I believe I have the gibs adjusted pretty darn good, but since I'm lacking the crank here, I don't have the proper leverage that I need, but it does feel good, and there should be no play when you wiggle it that way, nor should it be too tight. I guess I've said all of this before. All right, let's put this part on, so I'll make sure that that is clean, that the round dovetail is clean, and as always, a little earl, and then that goes on like that. And now this is a little bit tricky if I can find them here. We've got two socket head set screws and two of these little hardened pins. Now these have an angle on them. One end, see the angle? So make sure you put them in correctly such that the little angle goes into that dovetail in its correct orientation. Kind of tricky because they're so small. And I'll put one in right here. And then the set screw and I'll be right back. Now, if you got those little pins oriented correctly, the set screw will be about flush of the casting and you should feel it as you tighten it that it is locking. So that we know that one is good. And so is that one. And eventually we'll keep, keep this set about 29 degrees so that the two knobs, cranks, do not interfere with one another. The ball type hex key works great for that. Okay, let's put the compound on, and I do believe I had this backwards. It needs to go like this. And I'm gonna, do, I already oiled it, and I backed off the gibs, but I've got the gib in place. And it has to come in from the back side like this to clear that brass nut. And then the screw goes into place. Now that the screw was run into the nut, I can bring the compound up against it. Now make sure on the, your little bra chrome bracket here that the, the index mark is facing up. And then get these two screws started and tighten down. And I'll tighten the two screws and then I'm gonna adjust the gibs four gibs over here, as I have already shown you, and I'll do that off camera. Okay, the screw turns freely. There's no play. I've adjusted the gibs, it's oiled. Now one more thing here, I'll put a couple more drops of oil on that screw. And then there's a cover plate here with one screw that goes right there. Okay, we're at the headstock end. And this little bracket here just clamps to the bed and it's the pivot point for the gear cover. And I may have to move that in or out and make, the, make a final adjustment in a few minutes. Okay, this is the feed reverse lever. And you know what? Both of these gears were seized. I had to drive the little bushings out and polish them and then... Uh, oil them. They apparently hadn't turned in years, but anyway, there's a shoulder bolt with a gear, two gears on it, a cluster gear, and that goes in something like that. Better get a little earl on that. I'll paint any car. 
for $29.95. Plus masking, of course. What, you want it masked? What are you thinking of? I suppose you don't want paint on the glass. You customers are so demanding. All right, I'll tighten that down and be right back. All right, let's put the cover on. Now, I have not put these other gears on, nor do I intend to right now. I have to decide what gear ratios or what settings I want. I may make set them exactly like on the other machine for a real fine feed. That's probably what I will do, but that will be shown in videos later on. So I'm really done on this end right now for my purposes. Okay, on goes the tailstock, but I want to wipe that off. Put a little oil on there. And I've already put some oil on the, on the ways. All right, that's done. One more piece. You know, I forgot to paint this, or maybe I don't want to paint it because I noticed it's unpainted on the other one, and I just lost all my washer, so I got to dig them up, and that'll go right there. Yeah, the washer ended up on the floor. If I had a nickel for every minute I spent looking for parts that I dropped today alone, I'd be, uh, well, I could go to the Nickelodeon anyway. So anyway, we'll snug this up and always disengage your threading dial from the lead screw if you aren't actually threading because it's just going to cause wear and you want it to just spin loose until you're going to thread. So you, you can see it's not turning. Or maybe you can't see it. Well, several things need to be done, but not today. I need to make myself a wrench. This is off of the Atlas that will fit on there. Just from an old wrench. I still have to deal with these two ball cranks or come up with something that will work there. And I won't show any of that. And I got to adjust the gears. And then, of course, I'm going to take this downstairs into Studio B, probably along with this table, and I will mount it onto this heavy maple school table, along with, of course, the jack shaft and the motor, which are over there. And uh, that, But that pretty much completes the, the painting or the general reconditioning of it, if you want to call, that, call it that. But other than that, it's about ready to use. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Well, when I bought this machine a week ago, I had no idea I was going to paint it or take it apart, but I'm glad I did. But I think I got eight or ten hours on, on this little project, and it put me way behind. The weather's turning cold here, and I want to get this stuff down the basement and get on with life. So thank you for watching. The video was a little bit longer than I intended, but there's a whole series of videos now on these six-inch lathes, so be sure and check all of them out. Leave me a comment and a thumbs up if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time.